Right, uh, May 26, the NZB Standard Bread Weanling Sale will be conducted in Caraca. Mark Hughes joins me. Catalogs, catalogs have arrived. Anyone chasing catalogs? Um, there's been a May Day put out from the guys from NZB. Uh, if they're chasing catalogs, both myself and Mark Hughes and I believe Kath McIntosh have very large boxes. Hughesy, firstly, welcome. Afternoon, mate. Um, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Um, or well, certainly the mothers anyway. Absolutely. So um, hopefully they have, have had a great day you know, or having a great day on uh, on the 8th of May. Absolutely. We're pre-recording this Friday, but it won't be going out until the Sunday. So people got a chance to, to I suppose, sit back and, and uh, watch it. Uh, there's two reasons for that. Uh, the finger, mate. The finger got a little, uh, a little. Uh, yeah. How's it travelling? It's, it's lucky it's that finger, isn't it? Actually. Yeah. Look, it's um, the finger's improving, but um, I dare say as um, time marches on, it'll probably get back to about 75, 80 percent of what it was, as long as I carry up, uh, carry on with um, the um, exercises the um, the um, hand therapist people have given me. So uh, that'll be a bit of a challenge. So yeah, but no, all good. Basketball still on the on the radar or not? Yeah, yeah, no, the season kicked off this week, so um, but I'll um, I'll settle, <laughs> I'll set out for a couple of weeks till I've got some sort of uh, stability and a little bit of fitness to uh, rejoin the boys. So yeah, random conversations we have. Andrew Grierson's watching this and he's thinking this was meant to be a promotion of the uh, the weanlings that the Woodlands Draft have um, in this sale, and it will be, but we we can end up anywhere for a start. That's that's for sure. Seventy weanlings on offer for Woodlands in this sale, Hughesy, Although there's a couple that have already been taken out. Yeah, look. So everybody that um, can take note, lot fifty six and lot one hundred and twelve, are both being withdrawn due to injury. So we're down by the seaside filly and a uh, pass to Stephen Colt. They're both out um, through injury. So uh, the production line goes from seventy back to sixty eight. I think in all, um, I think there's already three being removed from the, the weanlings. So I think there's 114 weanlings on offer all up um, with three of those now now being taken out. We're going to highlight six of these. Yep. I've had a quick look at, at the pedigrees um, with the catalogs. And, and in all seriousness, I think myself, uh, you and Kath McIntosh are about the only three people with them here in Australia. So if people are after one of these catalogs, please reach out to us and we will get them to you. Or if you see me at a meeting or Husey knows who we're going somewhere, just give us a yell and we can make sure we get some there for you. We're going to highlight six of these though today, Mark. Um, not necessarily the six best, six worst, six no one knows about. These are just six that you have um, want to highlight. There's one that I think is a great point of highlighting, but they're a little bit of a difference with all six, isn't there? Yeah, look, certainly um, what we've decided to do is, and as we've done the last couple of years with these um, sales that, we, you know, we've, we've picked out ones that we really like. Um, they ain't necessarily, you know, the best on pedigree. These half a dozen that we're going to talk about today, type-wise and strength-wise and look-wise, are probably amongst our six of our top 20 quite comfortably, maybe six of our top 15 um, of the overall 68 in the draft. Um, Sweet Lou's represented here, Seaside and what the hill and we've got a crazy crazy good looking lather up colt who's a beast um later on in the sale lot 113 and you might have been down in tasmania and saw a couple others of the lather ups which we will touch on when we get to uh 113 which will be the the last one lot we're going to um highlight first one we want to highlight though Husey, is a sweet lou colt i don't think i have to say too much more than that for a start, but um, out of the better's delight, Mary and Alison Stokey. But um, it's got the golden cross of Christian Cullen. But then you go back one more generation, and you even have Holmes Hanover in the pedigree. This has just got New Zealand um, pedigree all through it. Um, cracking colt on pedigree to look at. Yeah, look, this is your archetypical New Zealand pedigree. Um, Sweet Lou out of the better's delight. Now we don't need to go down the road to let everybody know that that cross is just very, very successful in both hemispheres. Um, Alison Stogie, while she was a nice enough mare, she won two races. Um, the second, third and fourth dams, it's just a really solid family, but this is a magnificent type of colt, good walking colt, strong body colt, November colt. And, you know, going forward, our videos and um, photos will be up in the next seven days um, ahead of the sale. And, you know, early doors, the staff believe he may be in our, quite easily in our top half a dozen. The pedigree looks a little bit thin because you've got four uh, dams there on the thing, but you'll be very careful. The second dam, and I'm going to go with uh, Isabin Eva is what I'll go with. Someone will say I'm right or wrong. Only had the two foals, two to race, both won, both were multiple 
winners. I mean, that, that automatically just makes the pedigree page look a little bit thin. There's just nothing but quality winners. Um, the third, Dan, five holes to race, uh, four winners, um, yep. just good good winners all the way through. Yeah, and look, there's there's Cullen blood littered through the family. There's Better's Delight blood. There's Holmes Hanover blood, all archetypical New Zealand families. Um, the You know, they're um, being, you know, generation on generation um, strong for so, so long. The uh, one file that is named the Vincent uh, Philly there, Ivona Dadic. It's uh, I, I reckon they must have named that just because they knew I wouldn't be able to get my tongue around it. I, <laughs> I had to work my way around it uh, going forward. Sweet Lou, uh, before we go on too far, though, Hughesy's doing an awesome job. Um, Eric Anderson today, I was there at his place uh, in here in Bendigo doing horses' teeth, and uh, he is well and truly singing Sweet Lou's praises. Um, just continues to be knocking them out. Young two-year-olds now, good quality three-year-olds and quality open class uh, paces right through. Yeah, look, I think, um, and we've spoken about this before, it's no secret that I've been high on the horse since the get-go. Um, the results are talking for themselves now. Um, look, you know, he's he's in the top 10 all, all age stallions now. And I sent people go and have a look at the all age numbers and the amount of horses he's had to the races and the money they're making so far, um, you know, uh, 16 two-year-old winners in Australia, um, great crop of three-year-olds, a group one winning three-year-old filly at Menangle last Saturday night in Steno. So, um, look, Lou's well, well and truly here to stay. Um, year on year, his brand's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, you know, he's eighth on the all-age in North America. It's only April already. The reality is by the time... Things truck round. He'll be there with you know. He'll he'll be in the top half a dozen stands again in North America in the All Age, and um, you know his numbers are crazy, crazy good in both hemispheres. Um, very rarely do they sing a lot of praises. I must say, Eric Anderson and Glenn Douglas um, and Julie, they were all the same. They were saying, "Watch out for Sweet Pea." I can't think of the um, the first name of it. It's a name that they call all their horses that they breed themselves, but. Uh, yeah. uh, Philly's name's Aussie Sweet Pea. She's two for two. She smashed the track record at Charlton mm. um, week before last. I've also got a very nice um, horse heading towards open class free for all a horse called Captain Confetti that we actually bred. Yep. He's won three of his last four. Three of those have been at Melton. Um, and he's probably typical of um, the lose. He's just, you know, just gotten better with age as well. And he's a nice he's a nice horse that's made a lot of money and... Um, I can true, well and truly understand why Eric's on Sweet Lou. He rang me a couple of weeks ago to book in, and unfortunately he's now in a position where he's on a waiting list um, to, to our go to him. So, yeah, that's um, that's the impact. You know, Lou's got a full deck already for next season, plus a waiting list of 30. Waiting list of 30. That mm -hmm. uh, We will leave that one alone. Well, that's for a, yeah. that's a fight for another day that we will we'll bring up at some stage, <laughs> no doubt. Usually, but not today, because we're here to promote the yep. weanlings. The next one we're going to promote is a trotter. Um, Sundon Blood, the number one thing I think you need, especially in Australia when you are looking for winners. They have Sundon somewhere in there, and lot number 29 is a Bay Philly by What the Hill out of Bet, Pray, Love, and she is, of course, by Sundon herself. Yeah, look, beautiful Philly, um, October Philly, um, three generations on the page, and um, look, the Sundon Blood is time honoured in New Zealand, the most dominant sire there for a long, long time um, before Majestic Sun has taken over. But as a broodmare sire, um, totally dominant, as you would expect. This is a family of, you know, genuine free-for-all Majestic Man who's created an impression on both sides of the Tasman. He's in this filly second generation, Sol Invictus Takari, Montrose Kid, three generations on the page, a beautiful filly by Watt the Hill who can leave a very good filly. Had some size stake winners in Ohio this week in the three-year-old Phillies ranks. Their size stakes kicked off up there. And look, what the hill um, had his first ones to the races here in Australia through the week. Um, had a second placing with a colt at Menangle on Tuesday. There hasn't been a lot of racing for um, the two-year-olds, and he's had a couple of place getters in New Zealand. So he's knocking on the door down here. He'll probably have his first winner in the not-too-distant future, but... Um, he served a very strong book on both sides of the Tasman, which was well and truly in excess of 130 mares. Yeah, Majestic Man, he's a ripping horse, both sides of the ditch as well. Um, yeah. and, and as you said there, bet, uh, bet, pray, love. She's only had the three foals. You've got to re realise this is a weanling, so the second one is only a yearling. So the second one's not even old enough to race. One to race, one to win. Um, yep. And there'll be more wins for that horse there as well. Love is everywhere. So that's lot number uh, 29 of What the Hill Philly had a bet, pray, love. Yep. Um, the next one is a Bay Colt, lot number 
eight, um, out of an ill, uh, like by down by the seaside, you'll tell everyone about where he's at at the minute, what he's doing overseas and the likes. Out of the ill Vicolo, Marion Co- Classic Vicolo, two pe- two dams to the page, black type everywhere, and NZB, they're not keen on throwing out that black type. You've got to earn it you know, on the NZB catalogues. Yeah, look, um, here's another. This is a, a really good, strong colt, lot number 38 in October foal by Seaside out of... Um, Nova Colo mare, classic for Colo, so we're sort of pushing the clock back there. She was a um, 2003 mare, so um, she's 19, but she's had four to the ra- six of the races for four winners. Classic um, Americans being was a really good horse in the West for Hawley, um, classy American as well. Um, two generations on the page for this colt, um, a big, strong son of Sunbeat uh, down by the seaside. Uh, Woodlands Rose has been a winner in Brisbane, um, and I believe she's racing in Tasmania now in that um, immediate family as well. So um, you're buying a bit of quality here, and um, Tony Grayling, our um, yearling, uh, sorry, our stud master and weanling and yearling sale preparer, um, pretty high on this colt, lot 38 by Seaside. Um, yeah, he's one that um, I've got a funny feeling um, a few people will be on. Tony, uh, he's a fair judge, isn't he? Doesn't say a lot, but he does when he, when he picks a horse out. Yeah, look, Tony's a man of um, very few words. Um, he's, um, I think we might have mentioned this before, he's actions, not deeds. Um, and when Tony says he likes a horse, and um, you need to take notice. Yeah, absolutely. That, that is lot number 38. That's a Bay Colt by Down by the Seaside. Lot number 75 is another Seaside um, Bay Colt. This horse is a December foal, so a little bit later on. But a half, um, yeah, half brother to let it ride amongst others. This is a great family, Hughesy. This would be a hard one to have uh, been able to put up at the um, weanling sales. Might have been kept for the yearling sales, I thought, maybe. Yeah, look, this is a 50-50 call. Amarine, the office bred this horse. Um, loves a gamble. She's um, all those foals that she's bred immediately out of this. Um, and just take note, bonus bet, um, the fourth foal there um, by Sweet Lou was a winner at Bathurst. Um, so that mare is now four to the races for four winners. So Let It Ride's done a stunning job down here, but more importantly, a stunning job in North America. Um, done a great job up there, won more than a dozen races um, and a couple of hundred thousand a date. I will think from memory has been a recent winner at Yonkers um, in the last three or four weeks. Double or Nothing's done a great job um, in Brisbane for Stewie Hunter. And Louis the punter, probably as we go to press some um, races this weekend, I've got a funny feeling he'll be winning this weekend. Um, and the second generation is a great family, a stylish sweetheart. Um, Neil Brady's great mare and Romeo Romeo. So two generations on the page, a December colt by, down by the seaside, who is currently the leading three-year-old sire in North America. Um, and, um, you know, that male of him, you know, Great two-year-old crop from last year. They've represented again at three. So um, the reality is um, he's a dominant player up there and um, in Australia returns next season with a full book. I've got 60 on the waiting list for him for next season. 60. I hope, yeah. I, I hope I'm not number 59. I hope I'm about number 10. <laughs> but uh, we won't. Actually, in all fairness, I'm not on any waiting list. People probably think I get, I get special treatment. I'm not on not on any waiting list in case I get myself in the trouble there. Usually, that's that, that is for sure. But I think that that's huge. And and I know talking to a few of the American guys um, as well, they're very very keen on him. They think they'll only get better as they get older. You go through the Sunbeach somewhere um, line as well. You got Captain Treacherous. We're seeing what he's doing over here. This is the next generate or next year down. Um, they're very very keen on them. So to be able to purchase a Weanling um, at this sale by Seaside in this quarter. A few how many Seasides do we have on? Uh, it's fifteen in this sale. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's fourteen now with one scratching. One yep. scratching. So fourteen of them. So it's a, a it's a good way of getting in. Um, not necessarily at a cheap level, but you can get them a little bit cheaper from time to time. The next horse we're actually going to uh, highlight is lot number 103, which is a sweet Lou out of uh, Read All About It. Um, as I said, lot number 103 this is a Bay Philly, but makes it a half to um, hard copy for you New Zealanders and my hard copy for the Australians and more importantly, the West Australians. But how much was my hard copy purchased for at the Weanling sales? 4,000. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just one of those great stories, isn't it? That um, I, I'm sure that the, the guys at Woodlands, um, the Kennys and, and Andrew, must say to themselves, 
what are we doing putting these horses back through the weanling sales? We only got 4,000 for my hard copy and you got the opportunity to get an affili here. Um, Brett, on that exact same, or well, not exact same cross, but that same sort of line. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, the reason we sell these horses is, um, you know, one, to support our stains, but also two, to get the product out in the marketplace. And, um, you know, the... My hard copy, $4,000. Um, copy that, New Zealand Cup winner last year, $7,500. So American Ideal has had two sons through this um, for um, as weanlings for um, a gross to us of um, 11500 <laughs> who've gone on to make over two million in between them. So it's, it is all about opportunity. And opportunity knocks. Um, Ray Green was on both of those and his partner, Debbie. Um, you know... I'm sure they'll be fossicking through this. Um, we just thought it was about time that, you know, this mare went to something different. She went to Sweet Lou. So here's a great opportunity for um, the pedigree buffs out there to buy a outstanding filly, a November filly, buy Lou out of quite categorically one of the best families in the Southern Hemisphere. There's very few millionaires in in um, you know, in the first generation of, of, of the yearlings that are going to that are going to be in this sale, um, and you know, some great horses in there as well. Even in the second generation, run one over, won a lot of money for Gary Hall in Perth. I reckon may have won an Inter Dominion heat along the way, you know. So um, front and centre, great New Zealand family, but a great New Zealand family that we sell. Definitely did win an Inter Dominion heat. I will say I cheated and had a look yep. down at the same <laughs> at the same time. And I keep saying this: the beauty of sales is if you buy a filly, you've got the double whammy. You can buy a racehorse, you know, um, yep. obviously these are weanlings, so they're not as you know far forward as the yearlings, but you've also got that potential broodmare. And when you see a horse like my hard copy um, in that pedigree flashing up very, very early, it makes it very mm. appealing. And no one worries if they only paid 4,000 for them as weanlings or whatever. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great one. It's, it's a great, I suppose, um, the good stories about these weanling sales, those sort of horses, because I think sometimes people think, oh, they're just getting rid of, the ones they don't want to take the yearling sales, it's not that at all, is it? No, look, it's not that at all. And we're, you know, we admit we're copying the thoroughbred model. Um, you know, the thoroughbreds sell weanlings um, and have done for decades. Um, we need to be part of it. It's a good little um, way to get stains on the map. It's a way to get good families out there. It's just an opportunity for people to get into some, you know, to buy nice horse flesh without necessarily probably breeding one either. Um, you know, look, as I said, two generations on this page. Um, you know, this is this would be a great pin hook filly for um, a nutrient sale somewhere as well. Yeah, looking after both the sponsors. I can say also, Husey, copy that horse that we did mention there before, sold um, for, by you guys through you, is arrived back in New Zealand earlier this week. Um, yep. Doesn't mean you'll get back to the races, but everything is progressing very, very nicely. So good luck to the owners. Um, and Ray Green, I know that through Merv Butterworth. Um, I have a good association with him, but he uh, successfully landed back in New Zealand. So that's a, a great sign that he's going on the right track. And uh, exciting horse that we all want back at the races, that's for sure. No matter where, which side of the ditch you're on, I think he's uh, an excitement machine. The last one we're going to yeah. highlight here today, Husey, is the last horse going through... Um, and it is the, of the first crop of lather ups, but not the first. It won't be the first. How many lather ups have we got going through the sale? So we've got five going through the sale um, on the twenty sixth. So um, we've I've spent the last three or four days prior to this in Tasmania, um, and I've seen half a dozen of his foals while I've been away. Um, at Melissa Mains, which is Faithful Park, Shane Hawes, who does um, breeds to him and bred to two miles of Barry Rattrays yesterday, Thursday at Corelda at Longford, and um, he had two as well. And they are very, very good, strong types. Great boned horses, not heavy boned. Um, great rig, just got a great rig on them. Like they've got these strong backsides. Um, Looks like there's a lot of power there. So they've certainly the ones I've seen are thrown to their sire. Kath McIntosh has got one, and we've had a number of photos um, sent to us. So here's another stay in, like lather up, very athletic looking, thoroughbred in a way. But just tell you what, he's we talk about Lou and Seaside Mott the Hill on these horses and uh, stamping their foals. Well, we've got another horse stamping them right again. Yeah, and he. 
He is a cracker. I'll be, as I said, I've been fortunate enough. To, I've probably seen him, or maybe not now, but I know through COVID I saw him more than you. The, the thing a lot of people have to realise uh, with his horse, like he's retired the fastest horse, um, equal fastest horse in the world, um, but he actually won over 1,800 in America and was on record pay, record time pace for his first mile in that event, event as well, and he just ran away from him over that last uh, two furlongs. Oh, he did. Yeah. yeah, he did. Like holder of seven records, world records in North America. But, and I've, I've mentioned this before, and one, he's retired sound, but one of the keys to him and breeders and people have got to take note. I know his pedigree is a fraction different. Um, his father, I'm gorgeous um, by better's delight. So he's a grandson of the king. Um, at four, the general transition for these horses to go to from three to four, they usually get their brains kicked in, okay? Um, when they race the gorillas, lather up, kick the gorillas' brains in. So pedigree buffs, people looking at staying breeding to a horse, the transition from, you know, from two to three to four, um, there's been very few that have done what he did. Um, he beat up the big boys a lot and with a lot of conviction. So that's why we like the horse a lot. Um, that was part of his repertoire that we, we really loved. The back end of his career, same as Sweet Lou, back end of their career was strong, you know. So, you know, a lot of these horses are rock and roll at two and three, but there's some of these stay in stamp at the back end, and he's one of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I get into trouble. I quite often call him little. He is not little. He's actually um, 16 hands and quite a spunky-looking horse. The reason I call him little is because he's just a little kid. He's like AI. Mm -hmm. He has so much character about him it's, it's probably been hard for a lot of the kiwis to get across and see him but if you come over next year to lower long farms and have a look at him on the ground you'll you'll love him because he's got so much character and uh just plays and has a bit of fun as he's he's going about his job doesn't he yeah look and he's just let down from um one season to the next quite comfortably compared to some other stains over the journey he's got this burgundy um look to his coat which um when the sun shines on it the dapples look magnificent so um he is a good-looking rooster. And just an update on this pedigree of Lot 113, Candy Apple, the Sweet Lou, out of this mare, is now a Gloucester Park winner um, on a Friday night. So the, the current two-year-old um, is a Gloucester Park winner on a Friday night. So um, just adds a little bit more uh, credential to this colt, and um, he is a very, very strong colt. And look, the other thing as well, I've spoken to Tony Grayling about about Lather Up and the way these weaned off, he said that they just weaned off beautifully. He said, you know, there was a little bit of fire in the belly early, like a lot of weanlings, you know, getting getting away from mum. But um, he said they just wanted to work with him, um, the five and the other ones that we've weaned off and the ones we'll take to the sale next year. Yep. So, and that'll, that'll be key. And it's, people will get to see them. Videos and photos will be going up shortly. Stace will be getting those up between next week. Yeah, look, they'll go up in the next um, seven days. Videos or photos of the time on at work there. So um, I don't envy the job Stacey has to do there. Um, 68 of them, um, but top and tail, um, it's a job for sun up to sundown for a few days. But um, that's thorough. We're all, we're all about that. Um, that's what we do. Um, I invite anybody that's got any um, queries or questions or wants a catalogue. I'll be mailing out a bunch of catalogue to our clients this week. Uh, sorry, it'll be early next week now. But yeah. Um, I encourage people to get across there, parade on the 26th, sorry, 25th, Fifth, yep. parade on the 20, sail on the 26th. Our weanlings are going on Tuesday the 24th um, and Auckland Cup as well on the Friday. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I encourage people to get over there. Obviously, it's a lot easier to travel. Um, I notice Qantas now have started to factor in a few more flights between Melbourne and um, Auckland, which happened a few weeks ago, looked as though we were going via London to get there. So, um, but yeah, look, um, it's all systems go. And by that time, hopefully we'll have some sense around our stay in pricing for next season as well. Um, for the guys, anyone wanting to travel too, for the guys from NZB, they now have a Hilton. It is actually a Hilton uh, motel on the, yep. on the complex. So um, we'll be staying there. Well, I'm presuming you're staying there. I'm definitely staying there, Hughie, but I think there'll be quite a few people staying there. So it's going to be a great place to catch up, um, almost a one-stop shop um, to go. And one of the plus sides to it too, Hughie, is Cam Bray's not allowed in the complex. So if you want to get away from Cam, you can actually go to the complex and he's got to stand outside and wait for you to come back out. Okay, beautiful. That's good. <laughs> so he's on the bar list already, is he? Yep, 
Yeah, no, he's he's bad. But no, in all in, in all seriousness, it's going to be a, a lot a lot of fun. It's just going to be a brilliant complex to go to. A lot of people went to Warwick Farm this year with Nutrient um, and stayed there. At the most, this is going to it's just going to be brilliant. And it's going to be this will actually be will this be the first sale where they've had the the hotel opened? I think it might. Nearly yeah, yeah, I believe it officially opened a couple of weeks ago in yeah. April. So um, yeah, I think um, yeah, it will be. Uh, it wasn't there in time for the galloping sale, but. Yeah, it looks like um, the harness racing folk will um, get to give it a run. Yeah, so so that's going to be a lot of fun. So you can contact the guys at NZB. Want to know anything about uh, these weanlings? Contact Mark Hughes. Um, I'll put the the phone numbers underneath. Or the guys over in New Zealand, get in touch with those. I'm going to be over there for Tuesday, so stay tuned to Campbell's comments as well. We'll be doing um, quite a few different things if we can, um, as well as catching up with a lot of the uh, people on sale day. And it's going to, just going to be a lot of fun. It's great to get back to the sales. Usually we've had we've had like uh, about a month off, and I think I'm uh, I'm already tongue and ready to get going. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, as I say, I was on the road this week and I think everybody's, you know, now that you can start to, you know, plan things a little bit more methodically in your life. So um, it'll be good to get away. It'll be good to get over there and reconnect with everyone. We were there 12 months ago, but, you know, that felt like a rush. We were there and we, you know, we, we came home, but this time, you know, it seemed there's a little bit more sense of um, occasion about it, which is good. Yep, definitely is indeed. Mark Hughes, thank you very much for joining me, mate. Um, as I said, go to woodlandstud.co.nz. The uh, email address is there on the bottom to check up all the updates or nzb.co.nz as well. In, sorry, nzbstandardbreds.co.nz to keep up to date with all of the uh, the, the updates. And that it's great catalogue. It is great how they do it, the online component too, Hughesy. You were saying there about a couple of updates. There's a little blue dot. Just click on the blue dot alongside of it and that will update you with all the pedigree updates instantaneous, which is really key as well. Yeah, it is good. It's a, you know they're 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 updated systematically. I think we've got one in there that had a a, a win. Uh, one of the pedigrees is updated through the week with one of ours that won in the states again. So uh, yeah, no, the, that information um, like a little ready reckoner. It's there for people straight away, which is sensational. No, very good. Thanks, Mark Hughes, for joining me. And, uh, and as you said at the start of the show, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And uh, if they're still watching us now, they haven't had the greatest Mother's Day. So hopefully we've cheered them up a bit, Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Very good. <laughs>